All right, folks, in today's video, we're gonna discuss if the Boer Bull, or South African Mastiff, is right for you and your family. You're gonna learn everything you need to know about the South African Mastiff. So we brought him here to Bass Pro Shops, because as you can see, we're getting geared up for a safari over in South Africa. Few things left to buy before we uh, get on the plane and head over there, and we bring him back to his mother country. So we'll catch you out inside. We're gonna pick up some stuff and talk to you about everything you wanna know about the Boer Bull. First thing we're gonna discuss with the South African Mastiff is some breed facts. So, first thing you wanna know is that these are big animals. How big? We're talking the males 24 to 27 inches is in height at the withers, which is between the shoulder blades, and they can be 150 to 200 pounds on average. However, there's certain ones, such as Mr. Macho here, that can be over 200 pounds. My guess would be Macho will be around 220 pounds. He's probably 140 plus pounds right now, and he's only between eight and nine months old. So put that together, do the math, and you figure out how big he's gonna be. All right, when it comes to the coat and colorings, they're gonna have a very short and very smooth coat, and they come in eight different color varieties, including brindle, black, red, brown, fawn, mahogany, piebald, and cream. There's a lot to try to remember. He is a mahogany color, beautiful color. So plenty of colors to choose from, but lots more to come. All right, some more things to be aware of with the Boer Bolt, and that's their health issues. So first and foremost, they can live, surprisingly, nine to 11 years. It's a pretty, uh, pretty long time frame for such a large dog. And as far as health issues go, typical health issues with large breed dogs, we're talking the number one concern is bloat with any large breed dog, but also hip and elbow dysplasia. And uh, there's some other uh, ailments that can come around with having such a large dog, including some issues with their eyes that you may need to get surgery if they get cherry eye or their eyelids roll inwards or outwards. But other than that, very strong and healthy dogs. All right, this is a very interesting fact about the South African Mastiff, and that's that they come in four different varieties. I didn't know this either, so you're learning along with me. There's actually the Mastiff type, which is the one I'm most familiar with. That's a really large, bulky, big bone one. Then there's the Hound, the Terrier, and the Bulldog. And we'll dive in a little deeper to discuss the four different varieties and what sets them apart from each other. The first is the hound, and the hound type is significantly less bulky and more agile than the stocky and densely muscled bulldog type. The superior stamina, lighter build, and smaller bone structure of the terrier type makes these Bora Bulls ideal for hunting. And last but not least, the Mastiff type is the most popular, the ones you're, you're more aware of, and they're the ones with the blocky heads, the heavy jowls, and thick bones. These dogs are even more imposing than the other Boer Bulls, and they clearly show the influence the old English Mastiff has had on the breed. I just want to make a quick announcement that this video is officially not sponsored by Bass Pro Shops Outdoor World, but having said that, they've been very gracious with allowing us to bring in two big dogs. Of course, both of these dogs are very highly trained, very well socialized, and on their best behavior. That doesn't mean you should bring your out of control pet into Bass Pro Shops Outdoor World and let them run amok. That's definitely not what you should be doing. But if you are in the market for fishing or hunting supplies, boating supplies, or anything else outdoor, then make sure you check out Bass Pro Shops. They've been wonderful to us. Thank you, and we'll see you in the video. So let's talk a little bit about the history of the Boer Boil and where they came from. So in the 1600s, Dutch and German settlers came down to South Africa to establish some farmland. And when they quickly realized that it wasn't anything like Holland or Germany, they'd never seen this type of wildlife before. We're talking about lions, hyenas, jackals, and other wildlife that were just decimating uh, their farmland and the livestock that they had. So they had to think quickly and they turned to uh, breeding dogs that were capable of guarding a homestead. And what happens is they started breeding the dogs that they brought with them from Holland and Germany, and they started crossbreeding them with English Mastiff type dogs, like the old English Mastiff and the old English Bulldog to get on that size. And after however many generations, the Boer Bull came to be. And from that point going forward, it became one of the most uh, impressive guarding breeds around the entire globe and it still is to this day one of the strongest guardian type breeds that you can get for your farm or your homestead and even to this day this dog is used for exactly that and that's protecting farmlands and diamond mines in Africa and beyond. All right let's talk about a little bit about the temperament and how the Boer Bull handles his business. Now on a South African homestead you'd be kind of silly to, to just use one of these to protect against a pack of hyenas or a pack of baboons or a pack of lions or 
even the two-legged type of predators that are known to roam around in some bad areas. So they typically work as a pack themselves. In a small pack, two, three, four boar bulls handle in business. So that's why we brought out Mr. Thanos here. He's an Italian mastiff, but you can imagine if these two who work together beautifully already, they are best friends, BFFs, best friends, best friends forever. They've been training together the last five or six weeks since Macho's been with us. You imagine when I have these guys roaming around my one acre property, you'd be a fool to come up against the fence line or hop over the fence because if one ain't gonna handle the business, the other one is, and they're gonna come after you hot and heavy, and it ain't gonna be a pretty sight. So with that being said, keep in mind that this breed does not require human presence or the owner to be there to activate their drive to do protection work or guardian work of the homestead. Very independent and they're used to making those decisions on their own. Not too different than the Italian Mastiff with very similar lineage just in a different part of the globe. Protecting uh, estates, protecting homesteads. Let's talk a little bit about the trainability of this type of breed. So first and foremost, just a large breed. We're talking it's a lot of weight at the end of the leash. So if you're a smaller framed person, eh, something to think about when you take a big boy like this for a walk. Whether they, uh, their, big, their prey drive turns on in a hurry or God forbid they get startled by a loud noise, you could be off to the races. This is like a Clydesdale. A lot of torque in this type of motor that this dog possesses, unbelievably strong. Furthermore, not only are they strong physically, mentally, we are talking they are extremely strong-willed and independent. If we go back to the thought we had before about how these dogs protect the homeland and the farm, they are doing that 24-7 without a human watching over their shoulder, dictating their every action. They are released onto the homestead and that's it, guarded. They don't even need to be given that command. It's genetically in their DNA to guard the home, the homestead. So what does that mean? 24 seven, they're watching the flock. 24 seven, they're watching the perimeter. And there's not someone again there telling them what to do. So how does that translate to now? Well, you live on a, maybe in an apartment or a home with not a lot of land. First off, that's not ideal for them. They need a lot of room to roam but they are not genetically predisposed to want to just obey every command that's given to them. They want to do their own thing, all right? So that's with many Mastiff breeds, but this breed in particular is not so willing to please its owner. So you're going to have to be comfortable with what we always push, which is a balanced style of training. We like to show them how to do it with treats. Thank God they generally have pretty high food drive because they're growing like so fast. I mean, they're growing like a weed. So we're able to tap into that food drive and use food to motivate them but you must you must you must underscore all of that positive training with uh, pressure as needed more compulsion older school style of training we're talking leash and prong collar and e-collar will go very far if applied correctly so what does all this mean you need to start training them young you need to get ahead of it before it becomes an issue and they become a monster on your hands because at six months of age, give or take, that testosterone starts to kick in and they start to uh, become you know, a teenager and then eventually an adult dog. But don't wait for this dog to become full grown and then expect uh, the dog to just listen to you. So we need to set the tone early on when they're young, who their master is, and that they need to listen to their owners. And then we'll talk a little bit more in the next section when it comes to socialization. Absolutely huge with this type of dog. Or you bought this dog for home protection. Congratulations, but now let's be real. This is a monster of a dog, 150 to 200 pounds or more. So socialization is key. So you might think to yourself that, no, I don't want to socialize him. I want him to, to know that anybody that comes to the house is a stranger and stranger danger. Well, guess what? If you don't socialize them and socialize them a lot at a young age, more than most dogs, then what's gonna happen is when the mailman comes over or your friendly neighborhood, whomever, then you're gonna have to put the dog up because he's gonna be such a killer and so strong and powerful and wanna kill whoever that intruder is in his mind that he's no longer gonna be capable of protecting your home because he's now locked up in the crate. So you gotta think about that. Socialize, socialize, socialize all of your dogs, but especially guardian breeds like this so that they know friend from foe. They know when your drunk uncle comes over that it's just drunk uncle uh, Jeff and he's used to seeing him like that. Otherwise, drunk Uncle Jeff's gonna become a statistic of the South African Mastiff. And you don't wanna be on the business end of a dog like this in full protective, protective drive. All right, next thing we're gonna talk about is exercise and grooming requirements. So they don't need a ton of exercise. They are pretty big bone dogs, so they do need a lot of room to run around though. They got to stretch those muscles out and get their run on 
That's not gonna happen necessarily in an apartment. I'm not saying you can't do it, but definitely gotta take them on those two or three long walks per day. Watch out for the heat as it is with any dog. But these dogs love nothing more than to get out on maybe at least an acre of land, run around and, and really burn off some energy. They, they're great with other dogs, wonderful with other dogs, and can be wonderful uh, with children and the family. Just absolutely wonderful. Next thing to discuss is their grooming requirements. Easy peasy. They barely need maybe one uh, bath a month, if that. What they prefer instead is to brush them out with a rubber brush, like a horse type brush. Just get some of those natural oils to the surface. Now, unless they roll around in the mud or they get extra dirty, sometimes they're slobber, their own slobber gets on them. So you gotta think about that. If you're like a neat freak, this is not the dog for you. They do shed a little bit, but their hair is very short. But if you're wearing something black or you have, let's say you put them in the car, their dog hair is gonna get all in your car. Uh, but we're talking once a, once a month, you wanna give them a bath and uh, unless they get real dirty. And then you don't need to cut their hair at all, just brush them out and they'll be wonderful. All right, so something very important to talk about with this dog. If you plan to take your dog a lot of places, be prepared to get stopped at every turn, at every corner, at every person that passes by that wants to check your dog out because this dog brings a lot of attention. It's been all the way around. We had a, a line of people waiting to meet and greet him. And I don't think it has anything to do with the silly outfit that I'm wearing, but people are literally lining up to talk to us. So. We've moved numerous times throughout the store because every time we get stuck in an aisle, we literally get stuck there on both ends because people want to meet them, greet them, take photos of them, uh, put it on the gram. So don't get this dog if you don't want attention. We get a lot of different dogs in, a lot, and this dog, above all others, just more attention than any dog we've ever had, uh, bar none, period. So keep that in mind. It's actually kind of annoying. All these folks uh, want to take a picture of them or check them out or ask questions about them. So, oh my lord, be prepared. And nobody knows what this is. Nobody knows what this is. And then they're shocked to find out because they think he's full grown. Little do they know, what is he, eight, nine months old? And so when you tell him he's still just a puppy, they freak out. So again, I can't tell you how much. Until you point the camera at him, then they start moving. That's what we want. So if you don't like the, the, the publicity, just start pointing the camera back at them. All right, so when it comes to deciding whether or not the South African Mastiff, AKA Boar Bull, is right for you and your family, just consider the following. Socialization is key, be prepared to do that. Training is absolutely essential and having a firm but consistent hand and being fair, but again, firm and consistent. And are they great for families? Wonderful for families. So I highly recommend the breed becoming extremely popular but also it's a behemoth of the dog. It's an absolute battle tank with plenty of muscle and testosterone. And you need to make sure that you have the physical capabilities and the mental ability to have the type of leadership that this dog needs, physical and mental leadership. Otherwise, this dog will walk all over you. Understand this dog was bred to ward off lions and prepared to hunt all types of game. How is that gonna play out in your suburban neighborhood? It's up to you to decide if it's gonna be right for you and if you can handle a dog like this. And if you can, it makes a wonderful pet. And now it's time for the dog score. In the category of practicality, we give the Borable a four. The size and aloofness with strangers makes them more difficult to bring out in public. You will likely need to buy an SUV or a truck to transport them, but getting them to jump up and load into a vehicle is no easy task. Temperament. We give a score of seven as they are great with family, but again, very wary of strangers. For the workability category, we give the dog a six. Not ideal for agility or playing frisbee, but can definitely do protection sports, but they can also tire out more easily than other more agile and lighter weight breeds. For the family category, we give the Borable a seven. Amazing with family, but not everyone in the family will have the physical strength to handle or even walk the dog down the street. For the protection category, the Bora Bull was bred to ward off lions and other wild predators. This breed will have no issue dealing with predators of the two-legged variety. Therefore, we give a solid score of 10. For the exercise needs, we give a score of six. As they were bred to cover large farmlands in South Africa, this dog does need to get out and run to fulfill their urge to check the perimeter of their hopefully large property. After getting their energy out, however, these dogs can relax and become couch potatoes. For grooming, we give a score of eight. They have a short, smooth coat that requires little to no grooming, but they can drool, and they will drop massive turds in your backyard. 
Furthermore, washing them will take twice as long simply because of the fact that they are twice as large as the average dog and they may not easily fit into your shower or bathtub so you'll be forced to wash them outside. For the health category, we give a score of seven. Generally a very healthy breed, but due to their size, they can have joint issues and generally not live as long as dogs who don't weigh as much. For the trainability category, we give a score of six. They're eager to please, intelligent, and have a strong food drive, which makes them easy to train. But you don't typically see these dogs performing in obedience or agility competitions or trials. And finally, for the X factor, we give this dog an eight. Their size, intimidation factor, and the rarity of the breed will definitely attract onlookers just as much as it will ward off evildoers. So adding up all the scores, that gives the Bora Bull a score of 69. All right, so we talked a lot about the South African Mastiff in this video, and hopefully we've shed some light on whether or not this dog is right for you and your family. Make sure that you have plenty of room for the dog to roam. Make sure that you're a strong leader and that you put in the training and socialization early. It's ideal if there's other dogs for your dog to run around with. And last but not least, do your research, folks. Don't make your decision off of watching one video. Thank you all very much for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.